Namadal is a mysterious and awe-inspiring megalithic city that was built in the middle of the Pacific Ocean on the island of Pompeii in Micronesia, with the closest other inhabited island being almost 600 miles away. Now mostly ruined and covered by large mangrove swamps, the city still captivated and mystified the American fighter pilots that flew over it during World War II, giving it its famous nickname, the Venice of the Pacific. Hello and welcome to Unknown History. In this video, we will cover the history of the city of Namadal and try to address how and why this megalithic city was constructed on a remote island in the Pacific Ocean. Namadal is truly an architectural wonder. A floating city constructed in a lagoon on top of a coral reef. Consisting of a series of small man-made islands linked together by a network of canals, which are the inspiration for its nickname, the Venice of the Pacific, as well as the meaning for its true name, non Madal itself, which means within the intervals, referring to the canals that cross across the ruins. The site core, with its stone walls, encloses an area of approximately 1.5 kilometers long by 0.5 kilometers wide and it contains nearly a hundred artificial islands, stone and coral fill platforms bordered by tidal canals. The main building material used at the site was volcanic basalt, a rock that is quite common throughout the volcanic Pacific Islands, and unique in shape as the rock hardens in a distinct column or log shape as it exits the lava plumes when it is created. The builders of Nanmadal ingeniously used these basalt rock pillars to create most of the structures and walls of Nanmadal by stacking them in a crosshatch pattern similar to how one would stack up a Jenga tower. They would then fill in the gaps with small stones that were just the right size in order to stabilize these huge walls of rock. In total, it is estimated that 750,000 metric tons of this basalt rock was used in the construction of Nanmadal. The city must have truly been a sight to behold at its height. However, the ruins have been abandoned for hundreds of years, the local Pompeians considering it to be a sacred and haunted place, watched over by evil spirits, and as a result, it is only rarely visited in the daytime. Europeans who came to explore the ruined city after Polish ethnographer and oceanographer John Stanislaw Kuberi released the first detailed description of Namadal in 1874 would only add to the city's sinister reputation. Many local legends state and recall that European explorers who explored the ruins died in their sleep or got horribly sick, and once when a tomb in the city was excavated and its contents were shipped back to Europe, a great typhoon storm was reported to suddenly appear, battering the ship, causing it along with its contents to sink into the depths of the Pacific Ocean. And while these stories can likely be explained through tropical diseases and the hazardous weather on the world's largest ocean, Nonetheless, they are intriguing and added to the city's reputation in the Western world. Nanmadal was even the basis for H.P. Lovecraft's city of Rahilel in the Cthulhu Mythos. However, the question of who built this magnificent city of floating stone and for what reason remained unanswered. It was not until anthropological and archaeological studies started being widely conducted throughout the Pacific Islands, including the island of Pompeii, that a more clear picture for why and how Nanmadal was built began to emerge. The history of the island of Pompeii had been recorded for generations through oral histories, as no system of record keeping or writing had ever been developed there. It was when these stories started to be translated and recorded by anthropologists that the true story of Nanmadal started to be revealed. According to Pompeian oral tradition, Nanmadal is constructed by twin sorcerers, Olisopha and Olisopha from the mystical western Kautau, or Kananwaso. These men were brothers who arrived in a large canoe, seeking a place to build an altar so they could worship their gods. After several false starts, the two brothers successfully built an altar off Timwen Island, where they performed their rituals, and the legend these brothers levitated the huge stones with the aid of the flying dragon, creating Nanmadal. When Olisopha died, Olisopha became the first king of the Salador dynasty, around the year 900 to 1100 AD. Olisopha then married a local woman and sired 12 generations, producing 16 other Salador rulers. This fascinating oral account has many interesting details that have resulted in a wide variety of theories about Namadal's origins. The islanders claimed that the origins of Namadal were foreigners who used a magic dragon to help them levitate the stones in place. Combined with the sheer size and scale of the site, this captured many people's imaginations. As the public's imagination was captured, 
resulting outlandish and wild theories started to be speculated upon about who really constructed the city. From lost ancient Greek sailors, to the city being a relic of an ancient precursor civilization like the legendary Atlantis, or even the remains of one of the lost continents of Lemuria or Mu, or even that the flying dragon described in legend was an extraterrestrial spaceship that used ancient and advanced technology to levitate the stones into place. And while these theories are fascinating to speculate on, the likely story of how and why Nan Madal was constructed is equally as interesting and shows that the oral history of the island is not too far off from the likely reality of the events that occurred here almost a thousand years ago. The oral history states that the creators of Nan Madal were twin brothers, sorcerers, and foreigners, in Oli Shifa and Oli Sopa, who came from a mythical land. And while it was unlikely that these brothers were sorcerers, and this was a detail added later on in the oral history by their ancestors to increase prestige, and that they likely came from the nearby Solomon Islands or Vanatu instead of a mythical land, the rest of the account is very common in the overall history of the Pacific Islands. Holy Shifa and Holy Sopa very likely came from an island that was facing population pressures, resulting from a large number of settlements and people. This results in resources such as food and water and land being extremely scarce and almost constant warfare over those said resources. In times like these, young men would often band together with their families and set sail in search of a new island to call home or another island with a smaller population that they could conquer or coexist with. This fact, along with the Pacific Island people's ingenious outrigger canoe designs, explains how and why almost every single island in the Pacific was inhabited and discovered before the arrival of Europeans. So Oli Shipa and Oli Sopa were likely the leaders of a group looking for a new home and set sail around the year 900 to 1100 AD and eventually arrived on the island of Pompeii. It was at this point where along with the many other young men that they had likely brought with them on their journey that they went on a war path and subdued the local population of the island, despite likely being severely outnumbered. Their experiences of warfare on their home island, along with the possibility of more advanced weaponry, being the deciding factors. The oral history then states that Oli Sopa went on to found the Salador dynasty. This is when Nanmadal's construction begins as the capital for these new foreign kings on the island of Pompeii. When the ruins were first discovered, it was scoffed to think that the magnificent city was built by the native Pompeian people, who likely at the time had only Stone Age tools at best. However, as more research and other megalithic sites throughout the Pacific have become more widely known and understood, such as the famous Moai of Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island, which is by far the most famous of the Pacific Island megalithic sites. These sites show the scale of monuments that Pacific Islanders were able to create in place with mostly just rope, scaffolding, log rollers, and lots and lots of manpower, and proves that they were more than capable of constructing this site. It was first theorized that the basalt pillars that make up Nan Madal were transported to the site by large rafts. However, several recreations of these said rafts have failed to hold up when placed under the weight of these basalt pillars. It is now theorized that the basalt pillars were moved, likely quarried in the north of the island, and moved almost 20 miles overland to the site of Namadal's construction, with the use of ropes and log rollers. Then a huge team of men with sets of rope and scaffolding would then carefully move the pillars into place. This effort would have required a massive amount of manpower and many, many years of work. The Satellur kings wielded absolute power, and it is likely that almost all young men of the island's 10,000 to 30,000 inhabitants for almost 500 years spent at least some significant time being forced to quarry and drag an average of 1,850 tons of basalt rock per year to build the basalt walls, buildings, temples, and tombs of the great capital. This level of construction is only possible due to the island of Pompeii's unique climate. Pompeii contains a wealth of biodiversity. It is one of the wettest places on Earth, with an annual recorded rainfall exceeding 7,600 millimeters or 300 inches each year in certain areas. This makes agriculture very productive, and along with the vast amount of fish on the reefs surrounding the island, this meant that food was more than plentiful on the island, 
and explains how the society was able to afford having so many young men working on a megalithic city for almost 500 years. The story of foreign conquest also explains the reason for Namadal's construction and why it was built on Tenwen Island, a small outlet off the main island of Pompeii, and one of the more isolated spots on the island. Namadal was built as a special place for the residents of the Salador kings and the nobility, along with the site for mortuary activities presided over by the priests of the island. Namadal's population almost certainly did not exceed more than a thousand people, and may have been less than half of that, with food and fresh water likely having to be delivered to the city by an army of servants daily. Although many of the residents were chiefs or members of the nobility, the majority were likely servants responsible for the upkeep of the city. Namadal, or Saunalig, meaning the Reef of Heaven, as the Saladors would have called it, was built on Tinwin Island as a way for the Salador kings to organize and control their potential rivals by requiring them to live in the isolated capital city rather than in their home districts, where their activities would be more difficult to monitor and the threat of a coup or rebellion greater. In its golden age, the city was likely magnificent looking, with the king's family and other local rulers being cared for by an army of servants with beautiful, well-kept gardens and the best food the island can offer all on top of a coral reef, where fresh fish could be caught and served daily. The city would also be flowing with tribute to the kings in form of food, pottery, and other fine items from the subjects all throughout the island. Nanmadal also would have been a very important religious center, where there would have been many seasonal ceremonies and offerings to the gods. It also was residence of the priestly class of the island and would have allowed the Salador kings to have a great control over the religious leaders of the island. Recent LIDAR scans of the Namadal site also show that there was an advanced system of irrigation canals at some point in the city's history, likely providing the city with a source of fresh water and allowing the kings to have fresh gardens and also possibly indoor plumbing. According to the oral history and the evidence shown from archaeological data, Namadal was the crown jewel and capital of the Salador dynasty for a little over 500 years. Throughout that time, the Salador dynasty thrived and the city of Namadal was continuing to expand with various additions and the tombs of previous kings being constructed. However, nothing can last forever, and the growing cruelty and demands of the Salador kings on the local population of the island would spell their downfall. As the oral history of the island recounts, ironically, their reign would be ended by another foreign invasion by Isil Kikolel, a leader of the Nahanwari people from the neighboring island of Coruscant. The tide of the war is said to have reversed several times, but ultimately the Sadalua were defeated, as the people of the island of Pompeii viewed Isil Kikolel as their liberator. Isil Kikolel then took the throne and resided at Nanmadal with his family. But the results of the conquest and the fall of the Sadalur had shook loose the longtime hierarchical structure of Pompeii society and made it much more decentralized. Without the firm grips on power, the logistical and human cost in order to maintain Nanmadal was far too much to upkeep for his successors. This resulted in them abandoning the great city and leaving it to the mercy of the mangrove trees and jungle vines, where it would remain untouched and forgotten for almost three centuries until the Europeans started investigating the mysterious ruins in the late 1800s, with even many of the local people unsure of the true origins of this incredible city. Now in the modern day, the ruins of Nanmadal are a part of the Federated States of Micronesia and on the Pompeii State Register of Historic Properties. In 2002, it became protected under the Pompeii Historic and Cultural Preservation Act, and a greater effort is being made to preserve the ruins. They are mostly covered with impenetrable jungle and brush, and needs to be cleared to make all buildings accessible. The main channels need to be dredged to provide a route in for boats and tourists and rehabilitators. Rufino Mauricio has dedicated his life to the study and preservation of Nanmadal. For many years, ownership disputes between the state government and the Nahamwari blocked rehabilitation efforts and the possibility of Nanmadal becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site. With this designation, the flow of grant money and visitors would increase. The number of visitors could rise above the fewer than 1,000 it saw yearly for many decades. On July 16, 2016, largely thanks to the patience and perseverance of Rufino Mauricio, UNESCO declared Namadal a World Heritage Site and added it to the list of World Heritage Sites in Danger. With this designation, the flow of grant money and visitors has increased, 
and the ruins are now being protected and preserved for future generations to come. Thank you for watching my video on the history of Nan Madal, the Venice of the Pacific. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and check out my other videos and subscribe for more history videos.